What's up guys, Viper PV. Today we're gonna to be building the three inch drone that we got from the sub 250 boxes from FPV Crate. Um, I actually started doing some pre-assembly. Um, as you can see, I've already actually mounted the ESC onto the stack. Um, I actually used the um, longer screws that came with the frame to go ahead and mount the ESC. And this is the ESC that is on the Cinemac F30 amp 20 by 20 ESC that came in one of our boxes. And then um, we're also going to be using this flight controller. This is the, I believe, where'd it go? T-Motor HD somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, HD version with OSD. So it's the Mini F7 from T-Motor. That's this flight controller we're going to be using. And then also we're going to be installing these Xylo motors that we got in one of our boxes as well. Um, now we did have an option. I wanted to go ahead and do it with the Cadex Vista. I had this one laying around and really didn't have a home for it. So I wanted to install it on like a little three inch, which I thought, thought would be real fun. So if you want to follow along with me, um, this is what I'm going to be installing, but I will, um, show you guys just really quick how to install the camera as well. When we get to that step, um, along with the VTX as well, I believe it's the TBS nano. Uh, that it came. So if we're doing it with the HD system, we don't need this or the camera since that will pretty much replace it. Um, but if you are on analog still, I'll kind of show you guys what to do to install it. Um, so I like to go ahead and do is I like to start with my stack and get that least situated and know kind of where I'm doing. Um, I did have to wire up my plug for the HD system already on the CAX Vista. Um, and then I also... Um, uh, and then also I wanted to just um, burn them up to pretty much installing the motors, um, just bolting them up all four, and then soldering them all to the ESC. So we're pretty much just doing this in steps. So ESC, motors, flight controller, and then um, the Cadex um, Vista or the camera and the VTX. It's pretty much all to it. You just kind of do it in slow steps, and it doesn't take... Um, doesn't it doesn't kind of try to overcomplicate things if you just do it in smaller steps. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. Is we're gonna go ahead and do is I already did the ESC and mounted it on there pretty easily with the screws, and I did put little plastic screws underneath the stack there um, just to hold them in place, and then I just slid this right on top. Um, so let's go ahead and get installing the motors and soldering up to the ESC. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the motors onto the frame. And we're going to be using the motors, uh, the bolts that the motors came with. Uh, so these right here. So just make sure you save those and put those to the side. Um, you are going to need some, like some Loctite for them. Not the permanent, but like the 71. So you can still undo them if you need to replace the motor. So the blue. Put a little dab on there and install all four motors on all four arms. So now we're going to install all four motors onto all four arms. Just make sure that you have the arms lined up uh, with the wires on top. And the motor bolts that you're going to be using did come with the motors. Uh, so those should be supplied. And when you are tightening them, make sure you're doing it in an X pattern like you do a tire on a vehicle. Um, after we have this all installed, we're going to go ahead and put on some zip ties on all four corners just to hold the wires in place. Now we're going to go ahead and start lining up the wires with the ESC pads and cutting them to length. Uh, I leave like, a little extra room. Uh, I'd rather have it extra long than have it too short and then having to add a little extra wire. Um, I'm also going to be pre tinning the pads on the ESC along with pre tinning the wires themselves after we go ahead and uh, strip all the wires down. We'll also be pre tinning the pads here where the XT30 will go. Now I do have my soldering iron set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, found that the higher it is and it's being there real quick, real fast, it helps avoid uh, heat creep into the actual part itself. Um, so that's my little soldering tip for you all. Um, I would suggest also to be using a 6337 solder if you do have it laying around. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and do is install the capacitor 
with the negative side to the left, as you see here. Uh, you can notice that with the stripe. Uh, this did come with the, I believe, the ESC itself. Uh, yeah, came with the ESC. Uh, you want to go ahead and just butt it up right against up to it. Now we're going to go ahead and install the XT30. And I put them on an angle like that just because I couldn't get them straight on. Uh, I found this is the best way. If you're using this on with the regular VTX, you probably don't have to butt it up against like I am doing it. Uh, but this makes the best clearance with the DJI uh, Cadex uh, Vista on the back end. Now you should have got this in one of the uh, monthly boxes from FE Crate if you got it. It's a hardware kit. And this is where I got some a lot of little screws and little, um, I guess, little gummies for the stack. Uh, so I went ahead and screwed on all four plastic screws onto the standoffs. So we can go ahead and tighten that ESC down. I'm also going to be installing a um, zip tie on the back end here just to secure it to the XC30 pigtail along with the capacitor just to make sure it doesn't move and wobble out. Uh, this makes it a little more secure. Now also in the little hardware bin, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm using these longer screws here. Um, I believe they're 15 millimeter for the Cadex Vista if you're going to be using this with a Cadex Vista system. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and install that on the back end with the uh, two, this is a 20 by 20 section. And I'm going to go ahead and just install that right through the bottom plate there and tighten it up with some um, plastic nylon screws. Now we finally get the chance to install the flight controller and you do have to use these little um, spacers underneath because the holes are too big for the uh, size M2 size screws. Uh, so you just go ahead and install these on all four. It just kind of push in there like so and you'll be able to get those in there no problem. Now that we have all the spacers installed, we can go ahead and install it into the stack and go ahead and get some more nylon nuts and go ahead and install those on all four corners of the flight controller. Now this is where we go ahead and take a break from the Cadex Vista and show you guys if you're using the um, supplied TBS Nano receiver with the little board, this is how you go ahead and wire it up to the flight controller along with the camera. Uh, just imagine that the camera here in the front is an analog camera. So we have our positive, our red, our black, and then our video. Uh, this is exactly where you'll go ahead and hook it up to where is on the um, breakout board. Uh, the only thing we're going to be doing is writing that video in uh, to the video on the flight controller as you can see it right there and then if you follow the video out on the flight controller uh, right there in the middle of your screen where the yellow line is uh, it's going to go right to the video on the um, TBS Unify breakout board. Uh, and then also we have of course we we're powering it via 5 volts and we're also powering the camera from the um, TBS Unify Nano as well uh, to get that clean, super clean, crisp video opposed to relying on uh, the flight control, which might be somehow might get some type of video noise from the ESC. Uh, so that's why I gotta go ahead and do it separate. Um, we are using a common ground on the um, TBS Unify Pro Nano uh, along with the common ground on the flight controller. Uh, so hopefully this helps you out if you are having difficulty. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue with the build with the Cadex Vista. Now, if you notice, I actually did extend the wires on the Cadex Vista because they actually were too short. Um, and then we went ahead and routed it underneath the flight controller like so. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is connect our plug for the Cadex Vista right into this header right here. And that's pretty much wired up and done. I did pull two of the wires out since I am not using the receiver. I'm going to use the Crossfire receiver. Uh, so I did pull two wires out of it. That was just the signal wires for the S-Bus. Uh, and... That's how I wired it. But if you're using the integrated like DJI controller, you don't have to worry about um, pulling any wires out of it. It should just work like normal. Um, then what we're going to go ahead and do is twist the wires up and install it into the correct way, actually, into the flight controller real carefully. Uh, I've actually bent these pins before and actually had a meltdown of an ESE. So I would actually be really careful when you go ahead and install this and be real careful because you don't want to bend those pins out. Now what we're going to do is install the camera to the side plates of the frame. And they either way they can go is fine. Uh, I believe you might have an orientation issue if you're using the analog version uh, that has maybe two screws on it, but they all pretty much just screw in the same into both side plates with the little grooves. And then we'll just go ahead and rest that into the frame on the bottom. Um, I had to go ahead and put these on first 
onto the camera itself and then leave them a little loose and then the f they should just slide right down into the frame no problem and then you can go ahead and tighten them back up now we're going to install the crossfire receiver now don't worry if you're not if you're using a um, free sky receiver you just go ahead and wire this up to the s bus pad five volt and ground i am since i'm using a crossfire receiver I have to wire to t2 r2 and then um five volt and ground as well um, so i'm going to go ahead and install this just like so now i'm going to install the crossfire antenna onto this i wish i did have the tbs tracer uh that actually antenna combination would be really much lighter than this one uh, but I went ahead and installed it under the arm with some zip ties, uh, just like so. Now we can go ahead and install the top plate with the supplied frame screws. And just go ahead and tighten those all down to all four corners. And then we'll pretty much be completed with the quadcopter. So this is what the completed quadcopter should look like. Um, depending on if you have, you know, if you put a CAX Vista in it or if you went ahead and went the analog route. Um, but the, it does weigh 189 grams, so it's a little too heavy for being under 250 grams with a battery uh, with the Cadex Vista system. But if you are on the analog system, I did see uh, that it does come under 250 grams, uh, just that Cadex Vista system is way too heavy. Um, I will be leaving links down below to um, both setups in Betaflight um, with my switch combination, so you will have to tweak some stuff in Betaflight. Uh, but that's a pretty much it for setting up this quadcopter and getting it flying. So I appreciate if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a future video. I might even release another beta flight video uh, just on this quadcopter alone because I did fly it a little bit and it does fly really, really well. Uh, but this is it and I'll see you guys later. Peace.